And there we are, online. And who thought that we can be saying the SAIBC is over and now we are doing a weekly panel chat because they were so popular. The people really, really enjoyed them. And for the next two to three months, we have lined up an incredible panel of, of panels that are going to be amazing from principal dancers of ballet companies in South Africa and around the world to directors of companies, of festivals, of theaters, uh, to ballet schools. Um, so I'm really, really excited. One of our talking uh, points will be healthcare in the ballet profession as well. And we will be speaking to some chiropractors and some physiotherapists. So it's a really, really, really great lineup. Um, we will just ask you all to please look carefully as to whether it starts at three o'clock South African time or seven o'clock, because sometimes when we are working with the West Coast in America, then we are trying to do it at seven o'clock. So it's not at the crack of dawn in the morning to make it slightly easier for them. When it's the rest of the world, like today, we are doing it at three o'clock. Um, Charlene will have a seven o'clock time when she arrives. Well, will now be just past seven for her in the morning. But that's it. So we are up and we are going and we are ready. So let us just say hi to our people that are here. First, two of our panelists are Roberta Martin from the Zurich Dance Academy. Hello, Roberta. And then Christoph Bohm from the Berlin State Ballet School, both of them beautifully tanned, beautifully in their summer holidays. So yeah. welcome to our panel discussion. Yes. Uh, and then we have teacher Vanessa McElligott from Johannesburg. Hi, Vanessa. Hi. And we have Hi. Angela Malan. Angela, we can't see you. Can you turn your camera on, please? Um. <laughs> How do I do that? <laughs> um, at the I'm left bottom I'm, of I'm, your f phone or screen, there, there should be a little camera. You can just click yeah. on it. Yeah. Okay, sorry. There we go. Sorry. And there we go. There she is. Hi, <laughs> Ange. Angela was one of the top ballerinas in South Africa, is a coach, is a teacher, um, and helped one of the competitors that took part in the competition. So really great to have you here as well. So. What I would like to do today is to first get some thoughts, some feedback from um, the, the, the panelists, the jury panelists. Some of your thoughts after the competition has now finished. Um, while I'm saying that we are just waiting for Charlene Campbell, who's just arriving as well from Missoula, Montana. Hi, Charlene. Nice to have you. Um, so while we're waiting for Charlene to turn on her camera and say, hi, Roberta, some thoughts, some uh, kind of doing an aut autopsy of the, of the competition, um, a debrief. What were some of your thoughts? What were some of the things that you thought you really enjoyed? What were some of the things that you would have liked to have done slightly differently, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm going to ask the same to Christoph and to Charlene. And then after Charlene has spoken, we're going to show a little bit of a video clip and then we will come to the teachers and, and get some of their feedback and their thoughts and their suggestions. So let's start with Roberta. Uh, I'm thinking that uh, was, um, it was very, very organized in first place. So congratulations to that, I would like to say. And uh, uh, for me, um, there were some some um, very young kids with uh, maybe not the very appropriate age variation for their age. Uh, perhaps in future we could think about making a, a list of variations appropriate for each age so that they can help because sometimes they don't have the guidance. They don't have, they might be very talented, but their teachers are not that well prepared for such a situation. This, this is one of the things I believe could help. 
um, from other side, it was uh, very surprising also to see how, uh, yeah, when they were that talented, how, how some of them could, could dance mm -hmm. such a piece in that level. Um, but it can be, it can be uh, destructive in this, such a young age to, to, to perform or to, yeah, to compete in, in such a difficult uh, variation. Um, because then there is nowhere further to go and the quality is not the same. Uh, this is one thought of mine. Um, it's, 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 I'm going to interrupt quickly because it's, it's, a, it's a question that we have from the competition side often about creating a repertoire list. However, for so many years, we were just happy to have dancers attend and we wanted dancers to be able to use a variation that they've had before in the competition. Mm -hmm. So that was really the, the purpose of not ever creating our own repertoire list, which could be more mm -hmm. age appropriate. So that was the one thing. The other thing is we, the, the teacher that will choose a variation that is too hard for their students, most likely will even take from their repertoire list a solo and change or adapt it to make it harder because they believe their students can do these harder solos. Um, so that is what we, um, um, the issue is around that. So sorry for interrupting, but it is something that we will definitely take into consideration into the future. Yeah, just something to think about because uh, it can also go the other way around. Then you can have perhaps an older kid with a super easy variation performing it easily, and then it's also not, it's not comparable. This is, in my opinion, important. Um, I, I really enjoy the discussions, the panel discussions, and all the comments and in the, in the, in the uh, how is it called again? that it, each jury member could write down while giving their marks. Uh, because I think with that, they, they know where to go, where, what, what, what was wrong, what was, because sometimes um, in, in competitions, you just get, maybe you don't even get your marks. You just get your in or your out, you passed or you didn't pass, and you don't get a feedback so this was very, very, uh, very good idea um, from every side, not just technically, uh, also artistically. Uh, we could always write whatever we thought was was needed to to say. So I think uh, this this was a great uh, way of giving a feedback directly to each dancer. This is, uh, I think, it was great. This this idea. Perfect. Crystal, some thoughts from you. Yes, let me just say also thank you very much for your organization, for the, for the things you've done uh, your, and your team. Uh, I slightly agree with Roberta, uh, as it is, ex for example, for the Pre de Lausanne. You know, they get their variation for the juniors and the music as well. So, because what I often saw that uh, they make some parts of the music slower or faster to get, if my opinion, if you cannot do the, the, the variation, for example, Flame of Paris and the original speed, you should not do Flame of Paris. You should choose, uh, you should choose something else, but, uh, as we all know, it's not the competition itself, it's the way to the competition. It's the way how you get the attention from the teacher. And there are many, many dancers we have seen, which is such an amazing talent. And I have to say, thank you very much also to all the teachers. They did an incredible work with the students. For example, Paige, you know, I saw her last year and how she improved during this time during this very difficult time, I really, really appreciate. Uh, uh, amazing, really amazing. She, she deserved her place in the competition and she did very well. 
but um, what what we can do better first of all i think that's the first competition we you did online and in my opinion it went really well it went really well because the all the panelists they had the chance as you as you said about it to give their comments and i hope the kids meanwhile got those comments yes there is it's, it's, it's like that yeah yeah they got it that's uh that's beautiful and it's the only thing we should uh, we should do as a jury we should help them to find their way either i mean if you dance a cupid variation for example if there is a, concerning you yeah roberta cupid actually means it's easy variation but it's not if you dance it before you dance it in the royal ballet you have to you have to have a certain <laughs> A way to go, you know. That's the that's Thanks. the thing. But I agree. There is no reason for a twelve-year-old girl to dance Grandpa Classic. That's uh, this. I absolutely agree with you, Roberta. But all in one, I have to say, I was really honored to to to, to be part of this com competition, and uh, it has a future. I think it has a big, big future. Thank you very much. Charlene, your thoughts, but Charlene, can you just turn your screen down so we can see your face a little bit more, please? <laughs> there we go. Thank you very much. And then you can, must remember to turn your microphone on. Thank you. Um, so I won't spend a lot of time talking about that. I, I would um, echo some of the things that um, the others have said. Uh, I also want to applaud you for the tremendous organization i think for especially yeah you know, doing something online i don't even know how you managed it that <laughs> must have really my hats off to you on on that perk and your team i also really thought you did a great job with the gala um that's the first time i've you know participated in seeing something like that from start to finish not just the competition but the for me the panel discussions that you had um are very very important uh in many ways more important than the actual uh competition portion and i thought the gala was really structured beautifully um and i i know that must have taken a tremendous amount of effort uh what's different for me is i've really and, and maybe that makes me a good jury member or not <laughs> it's the other way around is for me, what variation they, they present is um, not that important. I'm always looking for their potential more than, more than anything else. You know, and there's almost always a, a incredible talent from Korea or Portugal, and we count on that. And in some ways, I mean, that's a great, great joy to see those unbelievably well-trained, beautiful perfectionists. But I, I equally um, am, and probably even more so drawn to those diamonds in the rough. And, you, and I guess because you don't really know what's going to happen to them. It's not just about their, their training, but you know, if they're offered some um, unique opportunities, it'll be curious to see what happens to them. And so with that in mind, and I haven't had time to write any sort of notes um, to Dirk or the, the rest of my jury members, which I'm grateful I got to meet, um, even through the cyber world, is I guess because I have this organization, Ballet Beyond Borders, I've heard from many of them individually, um, whether they scored high or low or, you know, teachers across the board. And that, that's valuable in my world because they identify themselves as um, very, very motivated and they were not necessarily, um, you know, the dancers that I scored high or anybody else scored high, but they reached out to make sure that, you know, I saw their video. And if I didn't see their video, because they weren't sure, if, you know, if I did, if I wasn't in their jury category or something, that, you know, they'd like to send me something else or for me to think about them in the future. And um, I think that's very dear. So um, I don't need to take more of your time, but I basically am very grateful that you invited me, Dirk, and um, glad to meet everybody else. <laughs> Thank you very much. And just talking about um, scholarships and, and dancers, just 
quickly a video for us all to watch. Hello, my name is Madmesama Anthony. I am a ballet dancer from Lagos, Nigeria. Growing up as a kid, I used to watch cartoons that they dance ballet and it makes me love dancing ballet. Then we moved to Badagui and my mom met Mr. Daniel from Leap of Dance Academy. My mom looked at me and asked me if I want to join. I said yes, I really want to join ballet. The best part is Mr. Daniel agreed to teach me ballet for free. And thanks to Leap of Dance Academy, I participated in an international ballet competition and I won a grand prize to go to the US in 2021. People make fun of me because they think that ballet is mainly for girls and not for boys. But ballet has changed my life. This is really what I want to do for the rest of my life. Hmm. So indeed, ballet does, ballet does change lives. And thank you for offering him the scholarship, Charlene. And I just thought, you know, it's such a bright, great testament to the competition and to all the jury members, you know, I said, when I was doing the, the calculation of the scores, I had to read every single jury member's uh, comments. And so I wanted to ensure that everybody got what they needed to get. Um, and then we, of course, emailed everybody their, their comment sheets and scores. Um, but yeah, so it was amazing to get, literally today, earlier today, that video clip to show the kind of impact that it has. And the impact, not just of the competition, the impact much wider of classical ballet in the world. So for me, that's really, really wonderful. So thank you to the jury. And we just have our jury chairperson has just arrived. Welcome, Ted, nice to see you. And um, is, your, is your microphone off? So um, what we had done so far- It's on. Was, thank thank you. you very much. Is we had um, um, just asked the jury members, their very brief, now that it's been almost two weeks after the competition, your after the, the fact impressions of the competition. Before we're going to go, we have a few teachers here. And just now we're going to have um, some of the students again from Missoula back with us as well and have some of their feedback. So Ted, over to you. Um, thanks, Dirk. And uh, apologies to everyone. I had a, a technological problem. <laughs> So I couldn't be, I couldn't log in somehow. Anyway, um, yeah, if for my part, the experience was much better than I thought it was going to be, to be really honest. I, I was dreading to watch 120 uh, video dancers, to be honest, uh, and, and it was actually much more um, doable than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was very interesting to have this format um, the, the panel discussions worked quite well like this and uh, it was amazing to be able to connect with so many people around the world and to see dancers that otherwise we would not have been able to see. Um, I thought, you know, huge com compliments, Derek, to you and your team for making this happen. Um, and I think it's a, it's a valuable alternative. Of course, it's not the same as seeing dancers live and that's something that we probably will always want to want to see but it did give us the opportunity especially in this difficult time to um to see a lot that we would otherwise not have been seeing yes i don't hear you Derek. now you're the one who's off exactly Thanks. my apologies <laughs> um yeah so thank you very much and yes we all agree that the it would be much nicer to be in, in, in contact and to spend time together and to get to know each other better. Um, but it was a very interesting way of getting to know one another. It really was. It was what I find, found fascinating from the beginning on the, in those first three days, from the 1st to the 3rd of July, when the students were able to upload their videos. 
they were also actually able to watch other students' videos. Um, so it literally was like they were standing backstage and getting access to the other, other dancers. So they kind of had a, there was an energy that was building. And um, the feedback that we had uh, for the panel discussions were absolutely magnificent, which is why we're continuing with them. And then the gala, I, 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 again, I was amazed by people in New Zealand, people in uh, Nigeria, people in Cuba, in, in China, watching the gala all at the same time and sending us photos when they came on. Um, and there, were, there was the beautiful touch of the Korean dancers that had the South African and the Korean flags, which was just such a lovely little gift to the, to the gala. And that was the, the other important thing. Uh, Charlene spoke just now about the gala, but everything that was in the gala was made for the gala. So whether it was a competitor dancing that had entered with their piece for the competition, or then a gala piece, everything was made for the gala. So it, it, it was just incredible to see around the world the interest and the feedback. So thank you very much again to all the jury members. Let's quickly cross and start asking either Angela or Vanessa. Let's start with Vanessa. Vanessa, any questions now that you have access to the jury? Any questions, any thoughts, even to, to me, um, of what you would like to do differently? Uh, of what I'd like to do differently? Well, first, I'd just like to thank everybody so much because it was just the most amazing experience, not only for the, the girls who were able to dance, but for those pupils of ours who are sitting, doing Zoom classes, feeling as though it's never ending, that, that this will never come to an end and feeling so sort of, down. It was so amazing just to, for them to be exposed to so much. Um, so on so many different levels, it was wonderful. I also wanted to say thank you for all the wonderful judges, the comments, the constructive criticism. It was all so positive and so constructive. And especially living in South Africa, to be exposed to all these amazing teachers and amazing people sending these comments are invaluable to us. So that was just so amazing. Um, as far as doing things differently, I mean, well, it, it, it was the first time this has ever happened. As, uh, from a teacher's point of view, I suppose, recording a repertoire on the stage with a few girls, I would have done some, dif some things differently. I've never done a competition and recorded it and sent it. So I definitely learned a few lessons there. Um, I, I also think perhaps there could be some guidelines as far as the costumes go for some of the contemporary dancers. Um, I, I, I thought watching it that there were some costumes that I didn't think were wonderful. So if there could be some guidelines along that, in that way. And um, I just, it just, it was just amazing. It's so been a if you say, thing. if you say you want guidelines on the costumes, what exactly do you mean? Because it's really hard, particularly for a contemporary, for a contemporary yes. team. Um, I'm not talking about the actual, I'm not talking about, I mean, leotards either being cut too high on the legs that they creep up at the back or leotards that are too low in front. I just think perhaps there could be more appropriate costumes. Not really, I mean, the choreographer has to choose the costume for their dance, you know, for their choreography. But um, that was the one thing that I thought there were times when I was wishing a child was wearing a different costume or she had had a bigger leotard or whatever the case may be. Okay. And, yeah. and the one question I do have, Dirk, is what you've got lined up for us next. <laughs> <laughs> I think <laughs> Vanessa, I think Vanessa, the thing is, the thing is, if you create that contemporary piece, the music and the costume should fit you know, yes. in a way, together. Yes. So you make some thoughts, you make some thoughts about the music, you so make some thoughts about the costumes, you, you make, you should make some thoughts yes. about the light. So, and of course, this is a new challenge. This is, it's not, in, in a normal competition, you have one light, so that's yes. the light, yeah. But you, you should make more careful, really thoughts about the costume. This, I absolutely agree with you. A few costumes, ex especially for the contemporary pieces, yes. they were just not fitting to the piece at all. Yes. Uh, absolutely yeah, right. So Angela, That's any that. thoughts from you? Your 
your microphone. There you go. Sorry. Hi, everyone. Um, I, I do agree with about the costuming, I must say. But I also do think because of the situation and because of um, uh, because of COVID and the lockdown and the not sure about whether we were going to be able to do it or not do it or, or anything like that, that a lot of people kind of put something together for the contemporary pieces that they didn't have a costume made or didn't have the financial um the finance to make it to have a costume but i i, I do agree that um i mean i'm i'm trying to make an excuses for some of them but uh, i do agree that really um it's very important that the, the that the costume matches the choreography and is and is um, age appropriate as well um dirk i just wanted to say that um I, I probably, if, if we could have had anything, was maybe a list of people that had made it to like the top, say top 10 or something, um, so that the dancers knew more or less where, where they fit in. Um, you know, perhaps somebody uh, maybe just didn't, didn't crack it into a, into a prize or, or it just kind of gives you a, a, a better guideline of, where are you fitting in in the level of the competition? Um, I don't think that's that's impossible. As a matter of fact, um, I do think that we could we could still send it out um, without scores. The the top ten or top fifteen. I don't know how the jury members feel about that, um, but I can't see um, why not. Just, you know, there's literally one or two people that that just just fell out um out of the out of the rankings or out of the medals but um yeah I, i'm not sure if if that's something you know because the, and then also the question always is where do you draw the line the top 10 the top 15 and then who's number 16 oh i suppose mm -hmm. it's number 16 so that's why in the end it's really kind of difficult and, and you don't want yeah. i definitely don't want to say i don't want to share the whole list um yeah. but i definitely don't want oh, to do no, no. so no, it's um, just that usually with when it's live, you are, you obviously have your you have the um, people that make it through to the finals. So you know people are eliminated along the way. They kind of know where they're fitting in in the competition, but there's like absolutely no guidance to that. Yeah. As I as I know sense. as I know from the competition in Vienna, for example, each contestants get their personal score. You know yeah. what I mean. So you get the score you you got from Mr. Branson, from Mr. Uh, Miss uh, Miss Roberta Martins, or, or from my side. That's your personal score. I think this could be possible, but to send out the general score list, I don't know. No, no, I don't no, think no. That's good. no, 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 no. I don't. I don't think that's appropriate at all to send out I mean, a, a general. And definitely not. I don't think that that's exactly. fair or right. I'm saying, exactly. I'm saying that, like usually with the competition, you have the competition, and then, you know, if you make it through the first round, you get to show your second variation. It would just be a, a nice way to say that yes, that you're, you know, you were doing well, or because because yes, you received your scores. But you have no idea what anybody else's scores are. So maybe they, maybe they, maybe all scores were quite high, or maybe they were very. Um, the the scores were tough, and we, and you you actually did really really well. You, you know, like a, you, I understand. I know that you take the top and the bottom scores away, so you are getting an average score. But you have no way of of sitting seeing of where you're sitting. But Angela. Can I yes. say something? Can I just? Because that would only be for the top ten, then. Yes. And it doesn't really apply for everyone else. So no. I agree with Christoph that it's uh, better to give people their individual scores, and yeah. that's it. Uh, I think it would not be quite right and not be quite fair on everyone else. They do because you don't solve the problem. Actually, no. If you say no. it's an issue of where you stand, and there's a, there's a different rounds in the competition. That was not the yeah. case this time. So I think yeah. for this time, I think we would be able to, if Dirk agrees, I wouldn't be against sending everybody's individual scoring if they asked for it. We actually have uh, already yeah. done that. The, because oh, you we, have? 
what we did was your score and your comment was together in the in the in the page and that's what every single individual dancer well, that's, received that's i think great that's so wonderful. they got yeah. and it was also it was interesting because in some cases a person would score 95 from one jury member and 65 from another one but then mm. you had the comments from the jury members um so yeah. there, there is a way of kind of getting an idea um i think what angela is just trying to do is to get a just a sense of where in the in the mix do you fall i think what would be interesting probably then is to is to release the the uh, because we said we, uh, from the, the scores really happened from 60 and up we we did give um we did give the the jury members a, a kind of a key card to say this is so this is better this is much better this is magnificent and the 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 top score was exceptional you have have to be really really exceptional to get about 95 or something was the the top 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 score so if you got more than that you know that that jury member or all five jury members thought you were exceptional and so that is how how we did it so the the lowest score it wasn't always the lowest score but what we had suggested to the the jury members is start at 60 and go up um so that was definitely out there it gives you a kind of already an, a, an idea where everything is is, is placed and Good seated thing. yeah um so yeah i think that was was interesting um yeah so that we can Dirk, definitely Dirk, maybe i can say something because for a few kids maybe they they get somehow angry if they see i uh, just i get 73 but it's the teacher's work now to explain for a few kids a 73 is is amazing you know because they were first time uh, in a competition joining a competition and uh, for somebody else uh, 30 uh, uh, 65 is really bad but uh, for a few kids it's really good so we have this this uh, score is just a number it means it's yeah. it, it should support it should support the teaching process you know and the teacher should explain this yeah. was the first competition you you joined and you did very well so you just got 80 but that is your maximum at the moment so we should keep on working like that you know what i mean yeah yeah <laughs> that's the thing yeah yeah so we will look into that um i have a question which is kind of fitting in with the contemporary discussion we had just now and it is something that I have thought of before is to is to have three, four or five set contemporary pieces that we will be able to send to the competitors and they can choose which one they use. And then in the week that they are at the competition, the choreographer will be able to spend time with them before they dance it. So it is indeed a good question, Megan Davy. It's something that I do think of. However, there's also the, the spectator value. So I'm always having to think about that as well. If you have to sit and watch uh, 155 of the same contemporary solos, it's less exciting um, for the audience. So that's again something, but that's why I have thought in the past of, of making five or six choreographies available, particularly also because I wanted to promote South African choreographers um I, I was thinking maybe we can do that and it is something that we can definitely look into uh the future always there's there's some financial constraints around that but it's something that we can we can definitely look in in the future so um good question megan anything other questions from the teachers while you have them <laughs> I mean, there, if you if you think about if you think about to to have a one contemporary piece which stands by everybody, it just could work if you have a video pre-selection. You know, if they if they do this contemporary piece and then this is maybe the first round, either contemporary or classical piece could be the first round of the competition. But then in the real competition to, to watch 150 the same contemporary pieces, I mean, this is kind of Peter Lausanne and this is, uh, no, I don't, I don't like that. Because I have to say. It's the in the end. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. What do you say, Roberta? It's going to become the same pattern in the end. Yeah. 
because it's also unfair in the end if you have one choreography and it was made on a on a short fast moving dancer and you're a tall lanky kind of dancer so that in the end you need to be able like with your classical solos you need to be able to choose something that suits you and that's why i did think of having then a selection of five or six to choose from um, and as i say then to promote south african choreographers so it is mm. something yes ted wants to say something yeah i i actually don't mind seeing lots of different uh, uh pieces uh, i mean it, it really helped keep us uh on our toes and it kept our, our attention i just felt that the um definition of what a contemporary dance solo is should be more clearly defined because there were a lot of um uh, what I would say, classical or neoclassical um, pieces, solos that had nothing to do with contemporary dance and didn't really show any other aspect of dancing of this particular um, contestant. And I think that's the whole point in showing also how you can deal with very different sort of material. So I would be more clearly, I would, you know, you can give some guidelines in, in that perhaps. I think that would be what would work well. It's interesting, definitely. Um, right. So we could definitely also look into that, Vanessa. Uh, it's just, it's so, it's so difficult because you, you look at sort of the, the Chinese contemporary, the girls are all, it's, it's almost a very classical, con it is contemporary, I wouldn't say it's neoclassical, but it's so sort of, um, the classical training really comes through. And then at when, um, at the Prix de Lausanne, you look at some of the classes they did and the girls really looked uncomfortable doing that contemporary. It was really out of their comfort zone. So wherever you seem to go, um, it's, it's diff it seems different. So my thoughts have always sort of been to, to take the girls out of their comfort zone and let them do something that they aren't necessarily great at doing, you know, um, just, just to get a different, a different feel for them because we want to be improving them all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, the different, different sort of style. There seem to be so many styles of contemporary and... She's right, actually, because it's, uh, it's not just about uh, competing. We should, they should also get something to, to, to work on that is out of their comfort zone. It's totally right what she says. Yeah. yeah so, and, and with the, the normal state of the competition, when dancers would come for the week, arrive on Sunday, and um, do the competition for the week. It's something that we can look at so that they only do the contemporary, for instance, on the, the Friday and Saturday or, or, or something to that effect, so that there was enough time for them to spend with the choreographer, maybe as a group and then maybe sometimes individually, so that there's enough time to, to, to assimilate and internalize the, the choreography. Um, because, I mean, there are some beautiful choreographers that, that create, exceptional pieces so I, I definitely think it's something that we and i say it's been in the in the back of our heads for a while it's always a, a cost if issue it's it's a it's a practicality issue um but those are all excuses that as we've seen with the competition if we put our minds to it we can make it happen so um definitely we can look into that for sure um any other questions or thoughts charlene In, in regards to what, um, what, she, what she just said, Vanessa, I think that's uh, really something that's important, that, that do, um, contemporary category. And it sh I, I personally believe it should not be on point at all. Um, and I also, I love competitions or the, the concept of it, that it's mandatory that they do classical and contemporary because when you speak about the beautiful Chinese dancers and the Korean dancers too, it's, I know in my own competition, many of them do not even show up to a contemporary class at all. They just, they just come for the classical ballet. And even though they are absolutely stellar in that, would you, I mean, in my com country, in my company, I couldn't hire a dancer that only did very fine classical work. They're good. They would have to be much, much broader, you know, based. So it, it, it seems that in a competition, unless you're just going to have a few stars in each category that, you know, maybe the grand prize should be to a dancer that 
can ful fulfill many different categories at a high level. Um, if, you, if we were to ever think about a grand prize or something, and even maybe including, as I do in mine, you know, something from their culture, because I, I always love to see something like that. You're talking about the South African, uh, you know, choreography, and it doesn't have to be that far, but it is a little narrow to just um, have one discipline that you're the best at, at this point in time, I think. Yeah. But it is interesting that most of the contemporary winners mm -hmm. were also in the top three or five of the classical section, in any case. Yeah, that's good. That's and that true. is something that, that always stands out in the end. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. We did this competition allow some kids not to do a classical solo or not do a contemporary solo as well as normally when it's the, the, the live competition, they have to do both. But because some mm -hmm. people didn't have access to choreographers or studios right. or whatever, we did allow. Right. But, you know, it's, it is interesting because the jury are mostly classically backgrounded um, jury members. Um, and so that often does have an impact, I think, also on the choice of the dancer, because oftentimes the jury member, I believe, and the jury members can comment on this, but you look at a dancer and you see a great dancer. And so the great dancer is oftentimes good in the classical and the contemporary as well. Oftentimes, not always, of course, not always. Um, unless something awful goes wrong. And as you said, Charlene, in some places, they're just so completely out of their uh, comfort zone that they won't do, and Vanessa. But generally, I have found that it's very, very rare at many competitions to have the winner of the contemporary be somebody that is completely, completely way, way, way out of the league of the classical winners. The one place is, is in China, but in China they have two different, full, full different panels. They have a contemporary and a choreographic panel, and they have a classical panel. And so um, when it's a classical panel that's, that's overseeing the, the, the contemporary as well, as I say, oftentimes it does happen to be that the, the classical body is the, mm -hmm. body that, is the body that does well. Um, so I, yeah, I think a good dancer is a good dancer is a good dancer probably. Right. <laughs> it's true. It's too right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, if you see what, for example, McGregor is doing for his own company, and then in the same way he's doing for the Royal Ballet, he's that's that's just amazing. This guy, he's so creative, on point or off point, uh, unbelievable. Yeah. Any other thoughts? We have about 15 minutes left. So if the audience have any questions, then please start sending them in. If any of the teachers or if there's anything that your students wanted to know, um, as I say, now is the time. Any of the jury members, now is indeed your time. Well, Dirk, if I may make a general observation um, for the teachers uh, as much as for the contestants. Uh, it is that I found a lot of times the musicality was undervalued and not worked on. And we would see people who were perfectly capable of executing steps, but it was not linked to any sense of music. And I find that very disturbing because I think that's the soul and the essence of what we are doing as dancers is making the music come alive. And uh, I, I really would encourage all the, all the teachers to to work on that especially on musicality and on personality because sometimes we have very good um, quality technical ability but nothing and even on the screen that does come across people who have a real joy for dancing who who sing with their bodies that's what you want to see and we could see that you know the, the top the, the the winners were all people who would really dance dancing from the heart and that's the most important thing that you can teach a, a student. And sometimes that got lost. So that would be my right. great appeal to the teachers. I, I, I was quite impressed by the fact that we could absolutely feel that some of the dancers literally jump at you through the screen. Because so often we say, no, it's on the screen, you can't see, 
whether there's great interpretation or not. And yet mm -hmm. there were some of them that just absolutely tran transcended out of the screen onto into the space wherever you were sitting, uh, adjudicating or watching. Exactly, Dirk. As you said, a dancer is a dancer is a good dancer is a good dancer. Mm -hmm. Through the screen or live on stage. Yeah. Absolutely right. Absolutely. Angela, so when you were working with Anne, did she have any issues or any thoughts or any, and after she got her feedback, what were, what were some of her thoughts? Um, no, it was, she was, we had an amazing time. Um, we had very limited time. And um, because I'm, I'm sure every, as everybody across the world has limited time as well, but in South Africa, we had really like literally only about three weeks not in full lockdown where we could be together in a studio and not even really allowed to be there. Um, keeping our distance and to get the kind of level of performance up for a competition of this standard. Um, it was limited time, but it was so incredible to see, um, to see somebody like a She has such a commitment and such a love, like come alive because of the competition. Uh, gave them just something, you know, because life just seemed so, um, oh, when is this, is there, is there a, t a light at the end of this tunnel? And still for us now, we still don't know when that light will ever be. Um, but just to go to the studio and have a minimum amount of time in a small church hall and um, during, especially like when we were, ex like during the exercise time, we were allowed to exercise between three and nine. And the church hall allowed us to come and work during exercise time between three and nine in the morning. So we could quickly go in and be there one at a time and be checked by the, the minister of the church, checked our temperatures and sprayed us as we walked in to do class and, and rehearsals. And to, to be able to see what was achieved, and I think for a lot of the dancers, was just... Um, amazing and it goes up it goes to the dancers to the teachers to uh with such limited actual like studio space and time um and then ted i have to agree with you so much about musicality i i think it's like one of the the biggest the biggest things that people lose concepts or um and I don't want to say here in South Africa, I think it's, it's a lot of places people just get so caught up on the, on the technical aspect and then forget about the actual, the musicality creates the, the technique. Without, if, if you're just off that music or just ahead of that music or something, you can lose the dynamic of that step altogether, which can totally, um, so I, I have to agree that the musicality is, is such a massive thing. And that's where another thing comes in South Africa is that we're so limited to live, um, live music for right. class, for we, you know, everybody works with a, a CD and now there's so many, I mean, with a, with an app and there's so many things that now you can speed them up and slow them down. And, um, and I, I think it's lost the, the energy that you get when you're working with live music. Mm. We don't have mm. the luxury here, you know, to, to, to I, I know that when, when you're in a ballet class and you have a pianist, it is, it just takes you to another level as opposed to like when you've got, even when a, when a, a, a CD, when a disc or whatever it is, is great and it's just not the same. And I think that that is one of our biggest problems here in South Africa. Right. Agree. Absolutely. That we don't, right. don't have live accompaniment. And that comes down to, you know, the, uh, it, it becomes an issue with the, with the performances, that, with the professional companies as well. It's just so hard without having live. And I think that it's getting lost here. So, yeah. A sense of musicality. I, I have a, a one of no, it's, it's absolutely true. And it's something that, again, we have to be aware of that and we have to work at it. And 
Hmm. It's, it's difficult because, you know, we don't have the resources that many other places have. Um, and it's something that we, you know, the parents can't, this cannot continue to pay and pay and pay and pay and pay and pay. And pay. Uh, as much as we would, we hope that they can, at some stage, the money runs out. So um, it is, it, it's, a, it's a reality that we face. And I'm sure we're not the only country that has that. But yeah, um, yeah I, what I loved, and, and Vanessa spoke about this in the very, very beginning, was that many studios around the world, literally around the world, I had photos from Venezuela, from Mexico, from South Africa, um, from China, where the teachers had set up a screen in the studio and the class joined for the ballet class that happened every day. And so that for me was just such a beautiful moment that, that we were able to, to connect without people realizing they were doing the same class in All so around. many different places around the world. It was the same as on Saturday night when people tuned in around seven o'clock, some five to seven, some five past seven, but around seven o'clock and thousands of people around the world were watching the same show. And for me, that was mind blowing. It really, really was. And that was just mm. a really great experience. And to know that it worked because at, at that stage, we were very happy to know that it was, it was done. There was nothing we could do anymore. It was done. I do have a question from a parent saying, um, does it mean if, you're, if you didn't place, you are not a good dancer? Uh, I think the short answer, of course, is, is, is no. it doesn't mean that at all. There were 100, no. almost 100 dancers in the scholar section. So only so many could place. Uh, so it takes so many different kinds of dancers on so many different levels to make up a ballet company. So not everybody will be Sylvie Guillem. There has to be other dancers in the company as well. So um, it's, it's something that, that I think is important. But your comments, jury members. Um, well, it did, if you're not placed, I mean, it's, if you didn't win the top three, one of, one of the medals, it doesn't mean that you're a bad dancer. It doesn't also mean that you're a good dancer. It really depends. I mean, there's lots of, as you say, Derek, there's lots of different levels. Um, and there are there are some of the contestants who will who did not win a medal who will go on to have wonderful careers as professionals, and there are some of the contestants who did not get a medal who will hopefully you know be very happy ballet audience but perhaps never professional dancers. Um, that's also fine. I think ballet at depend you know is is something that will enhance your life whether or not you become a professional. And it's something that you will carry with you all your life. Um, but not to win a medal does not mean you're not a good dancer. I've never won a medal in my life for, for dancing. And I thought it was not such a bad dancer. So, you know, most of the people in my company did not compete in professional competitions and they're fantastic dancers. So, Except one you that go. you got from the ballet competition. <laughs> <laughs> That's that one I know, That's indeed. Yeah. No, there's a few that have no. <laughs> people, but it's not, it's not a requirement, you know, it's not a yeah. prerequisite. And it doesn't guarantee that you will. Winning in a competition also doesn't mean that you're going to be a great professional dancer, because sometimes things happen in between. And there's many qualities that are required that are, you know, to, to make a good professional dancer that, it, that it do not have anything to do with winning a medal. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sorry, can, yes, can I just say, Dick, you actually almost build up on your failures. It's, it's a, a crazy thing to say, but if you didn't do as well this competition, surely it gives you the determination to, you know, next time, this is what you're going to do. And it, it's, it's a building up. It's, it's, it's all, a, it's growing as a dancer. It's, it's why you do it. And that's, that's the line. That's what you're there for. I, I have a you comment. Grow from... each time. In, in line with that, um, a, a friend of ours, Angela uh, Harvey, I don't you remember Harvey Klein, he just wrote, um, use the fact that you didn't win to spur you on to improve, which is 100% true. And in line with that, he also says that the triumph of a competition is the taking part. 
the experience of yes. dancing and the freedom it gives you, especially when you've been locked up and confined, is both mental and physical, physically uplifting. And above all, it's fun to test your ability. So I think that's a, a really, really lovely comment. Thanks, Harv. I hope you are well. And then somebody else wrote in, which I thought was, what was quite interesting, because, you know, we are teaching a lot of ballet classes these days through Zoom. And somebody said, why don't you get a pianist to be a accompanist via Zoom? So the one pianist can, can play for a few classes. I, I don't know. I've never tried that. It's, it's certainly worth exploring. I know that there are a lot of people that will say, but it, it's kind of then like working on a CD, but it's not completely because your pianist will, will be able to play for that class. Um, so that is quite an interesting concept that, that can be used and can be a money saver. So we'll definitely, again, put that in the backs of our heads. Um, so, yeah. Um, so that's, that's very good. I have another parent that's, that wrote in from, from Masula that said, um, oh, it's the daughter, uh, Annabelle, that took part. I really enjoyed the classes. I'm wondering if there is a way in the future for a group piece or choreography to be created with dancers from around the world. Um, so Annabelle. Has happened. It has happened online and offline. So at the competition in South Africa in 2018, we were in the midst of a terrible drought in South Africa. And two very famous South African choreographers created this um, rain dance. And we had this famous, these famous singers and the whole, whole group had to perform in the end in this rain dance that was that was that was performed by the by the whole competition. So it's definitely, I think, something that is that is really really beautiful and can be done and should be done. It's like having a finale or, um, at the end or grand defile. Um, and so those are the the things that we can definitely look at. But um, I know that the Royal Ballet Ted they they were doing a, a choreography with. They dances all over and they were doing it with different schools. Was, was your school involved in that as well? Yes, the National Ballet Academy was involved as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this, uh, and actually there's been, there have been uh, in the last few months, quite a few uh, Zoom choreographies um, with dancers in different countries participating. So that, that is definitely something that is uh, coming out of this whole Corona crisis that is a, a positive and an interesting development. Again, not something that can replace the the real live uh, performance, but it's as a as an addition to what we do. It, it's a really interesting concept. Absolutely, we have three minutes left, so let's do a final roundup of everybody. Um, <clears throat> let's start with you, Roberta, and we're going to finish with Ted. Michael. Roberta. Is your microphone? Microphone. There we yes, go. you are here. Sorry. Thank you, Dirk. Um, I, I, I'm really happy to have participated uh, in the jury, and uh, I think it was, it was a great uh, opportunity for the kids, a great event that you created online. And uh, I'm hoping that we do not have to be in this situation again. And I'm very much looking forward for this event live <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, there. Um, I really enjoyed it, also meeting everyone through Zoom. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I think it was a great thing. And I, yeah, congratulations. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Charlene. No, the other way. Charlie. The microphone is still off. <laughs> I'm here. I'm there here. <laughs> uh, sorry, it's still early here. <laughs> um, I look forward to meeting all of you in Europe, South Africa, wherever we possibly can. And, and thank you for being a part of your community and, and inviting me. Thank you. Thank you. Christoph. Eric, yes. Uh, thank you very much. And you definitely brought ballet beyond borders that's <laughs> a really good job thank you very much for that a great collaboration mm -hmm. vanessa 
Well, in this coronavirus crisis time, we would never ever be able to have these wonderful people in our living room having a conversation and listening to you guys <laughs> from all over the world. And we are so grateful. Sitting here in South Africa, it would never have happened to us. So if it wasn't for coronavirus, this wouldn't have happened. So it's, it's the most amazing thing. You've got, it's, it is amazing. And we're so grateful for you, to you. Thank you so much. And thank you, Dirk. And as I said, we're waiting to see what you come up with next. Thank you very much. <laughs> no pressure. Ange, your microphone is off. There we go. Sorry. Uh, thanks, everyone. It was Roberta. It's so great to see you. <laughs> um, but thank you, everybody. It was just really a fantastic experience. Dirk, thank you for giving people a reason um, to get out of their houses here uh, and just to be able to, to have something to work towards. Really, thank you so much. Thank you, Roberta and Christoph, for your great classes. We did them, I did them as well, so it was great. <laughs> Thank you so much, Roberta. Um, but everyone, and well done, Vanessa Page. She really did South Africa proud. And um, to everybody that entered and that's watching, thanks. It was, it's just been a really wonderful experience. Thank you. Thank you, Ted. Well, I can only um, join in with saying thank you for everything. It, it was really a great experience and uh, I, I enjoyed the whole process. I enjoyed the competition and seeing, as I said, so many great contestants. Uh, I also really enjoyed the gala with the great diversity of, of um, styles and of different, um, different pieces that were brought uh, and some of them quite daring, um, which I thought it was very interesting and very groundbreaking to see as this whole competition has been quite groundbreaking uh, this year. So chapeau, heads off to you, Dirk, and to your team, because you uh, I thought it was an important event if, if for the dance community. And thank I was happy you. to be part of it. So thank you everyone. And I look forward to, uh, to seeing you all in person somewhere sometime soon. Thank Hopefully. you very much. Thank you, thank you. So next week, we will be talking to Guillaume Cote, principal from National Ballet of Canada, Ashley Bowder, principal from New York City Ballet, Angela Malan, South Africa's principal ballerina, and Andile Ndlovu, who is dancing from South Africa, but in the Washington Ballet. So we look forward to seeing everybody there. To our panelists, thank you very much. And again, thanks for your time, your effort, and your love, and your very kind remarks. See you all very soon in a different forum somewhere. Ciao.